the time in which you guys get to see the amplifier and preamplifier that I have chosen to begin to show you what the Magical M6 is capable of doing. No, it's not Solution. No, it's not Quell. No, it's not Dan D. Agostino. No, it's not Constellation. This amplifier is an amplifier that I would call the last man standing, if you will. It's actually been the amplifier that I read about the most when I began to explore this brand. This brand is a brand that I truly, truly believe makes some of the best amplifiers in the world. Um, and I wanted to simply show you what I am working with now. But before I do that, let's go over some of the specifications. It's uh, 2 times 150 watts of pure class A. Fully balanced. 40 high current bipolar output transistors. 670,000 power capacitor bank. It's got guideline, guideline reference gold embedded silver internal wiring. Custom built separate transformers. Shielded epoxy damp transformer casings. Suspended for effective vibration isolation. It's got a rigid mechanical structure. It's got Mundorf capacitors for power supply decoupling. And it's also an amplifier that I would say, I'm gonna throw in my own twist. I would say it's probably the beautiful, the most beautiful amplifier in the lineup. I believe, in my opinion, this amplifier feels like more attention was paid, at least from the outside, more than the siblings. But let's not forget about the inside, of course, because this company builds everything top to bottom. Um, and I will say to you that I am quite impressed by it. I will give you some thoughts here shortly. But let's go and show what I have here. I introduce you to the last amplifier that remains from this particular manufacturer. I have tried every other amplifier. And this one remains. Meet the Griffin Antillion Evil. That's right. The Antillion Evil. You see it right there? I love that look. It looks so like Darth Vader. It just, look at it. It just looks mean. It just looks evil. It's just a beautiful looking piece. Why don't we just turn it on and see what happens? So, it weighs about 184 pounds, built like just a tank, guys. I mean, this is still really, really, really incredible. I love the look. I love that part that, ex that just sticks out of the amplifier, if you can see it. I love that. Um, I love that dragon, that, or whatever <laughs> that might be. I just love it. I mean, I love that. To me, that's just such a beautiful piece. Um, guys, let me see if we get a quick peek at the inside, more or less. The huge capacitors there, four of those monsters, four or six. I don't know if you guys can see, more or less. Uh, the weight is unbelievable. Like, it's just un ungodly heavy. Um, but this, of course, needs to be mated one more time with the griffin pandora yes griffin pandora is back in the mix we are back with it to create full synergy and to hopefully hear what this amplifier has to offer 
that is different than the other two amplifiers that I have had here, which you can see right now on your display. These two amplifiers were the bigger siblings, the Griffin Coliseum and then the Griffin Mephisto. Okay, so those two are the siblings, the older siblings of the Antillian. The Antillian Evo came out in 2015. That's when it was released. Um, it is supposed to be the latest. Well, let me not say the latest. The latest is actually the Griffin Essence. But this is supposed to be the latest design after the Coliseum and the Griffin Mephisto came out. Um, the great thing about this amplifier is that this one does, does have negative feedback. So I think that's a great that's a great thing because it does change the tonality of the amplifier. A lot of you guys are always saying, I hate amplifiers with negative feedback. I don't like negative feedback. That's a poor design if it has negative feedback. Well, I'm here to tell you, I don't hear anything negative about this amplifier when it comes to its sound. Uh, it has the typical Griffin, the huge Griffin control that we're all, we're all accustomed to hearing. It has the world-class sound stage, the beautiful highs that are, of course, a trait of pure class A. It runs very hot. I will say probably, probably runs hotter than the other two amplifiers. Um, it has all that monster control over the woofers, over those 10 and a half inch drivers. It controls them like there's just no problem there. It also seems to react positively to the Dragon, Audio Quest Dragon power cords, okay? So I continue to roll with these Dragon power cords, guys, that you see there, okay? I continue to go with those. Um, look at, the, look at the, the massive power cords that are just feeding this beast, okay? I mean, it's just crazy, right? Um, and I do believe that is still the number one power cord for Griffin components, in my opinion. I have also had excellent results with the Hurricane power cords, by the way. In case you are considering a, considering a Griffin product, I do like AudioQuest Dragon and Hurricanes. Uh, but the Dragon, in my opinion, just take everything to a whole new level, at least with their amplifiers. I haven't really played with the pre-amplifier too much, uh, so I couldn't tell you how much it adds to the presentation, but I know when it comes to the amplifiers, the change is massive. It's day and night. It's like you can't, if you unplug the Dragon power cords from a Griffin amplifier and you plug in any other amplifier, which I have tried different amplifier, different um, power cords, I'm sorry, it almost sounds like the amplifier is broken. And the reason for that, guys, is because the, the way this amplifier just completely changes with that power cord is just unbelievable. You guys have to be here to really believe what happens. Just the 3D sound, all the information that pops off the speaker. The bass is much deeper with the Dragon power cord. Uh, there is just a lot more dimension to the sound. Um, now, that doesn't mean that other power cords do not work. Yes. Other ones, other other power cords will definitely work, but once you hear a Dragon power cord, it's hard to go back, at least with a Griffin amplifier. That much I can tell you. Um, so I am right now. You guys heard that one song that I was playing before, right? That song uh, that was three and a half minutes long, uh, where I didn't show the amplifier in the preamplifier. That was the first presentation that you guys heard. I was using the. I was actually, believe it or not, I was actually using the Pandora, but I was using Griffin interconnects. I wasn't using my synergistic research. That will come pretty soon. So I want to, I want you guys to tell me what you hear uh, when I play the XP32 right there with synergistic research and the Griffin Antillion Evil. Um, guys, this has been... It, it's a dream come true, guys, to be able to tell you that I have been able to finally own all, all the Griffin amplifiers, but one being the Essence. 
I've been able to own all of them, at least in their stereo, in the stereo version of the amplification. Um, and I am, I don't think I have ever done this before. Uh, maybe Pass Labs actually is the only brand where I have gone through pretty much all their amplifiers, at least current models. Um, but Griffin has been the only brand where I have pretty much explored um, their top three amplifiers, and I have not been disappointed. Uh, yes, guys, there are differences. Um, there's no question about it. Each amplifier sounds very different than the next. Uh, and I think that was Griffin's intention is for you guys to kind of get an idea or at least decide what you would prefer. At a high level, I can tell you that the Antillian Evo is certainly more analog sounding. It sounds more human, if that makes sense. Um, it sounds a little more, um, I would say, relaxed in its presentation. It, it doesn't have all the level of resolution that the Mephisto has. However, that does not mean it lacks resolution it has plenty of it but i think the mephisto tends to just extract even more information or makes it more apparent that's the word um so it probably becomes the amplifier of the intelligent that might be easier to accommodate in most of your guys' systems it's probably a lot more it's probably friendlier it's uh it's just that amplifier that you can just drop in your system and nine times out of ten you're going to be impressed by it and whatever else you have there playing um, the mephisto as you know isn't that amplifier the mephisto is the amplifier that simply has a different approach a different bis a, a different mission objective and that is to tell you the truth and nothing but the truth about your own rig um, and I just think that the Antillion goes about its business in a different way. So, but anyway, in addition to that, I hope you guys are excited to continue to hear the Antillion Evo. I have a lot of other things, guys. Look at that. What are those? What could those possibly be? That's six boxes. Well, stay tuned for that. You're about to find out what is inside those six boxes, but I promise you what's inside those six boxes will definitely make you be so excited, just like I am. Um, and at the end of the day, just remember what I have been saying all along. I am here trying to play with the M6 and beginning to massage its presentation in the direction in which I want it to go. You have a speaker here that is extremely neutral it doesn't add or take away but the problem here guys and i don't think i've said this quite clearly or articulated it good enough when you have a speaker of this neutral this this neutral the problem is that if you are a person that doesn't want to embark on trying to figure out that speaker trying to understand how to accommodate it trying to bring the right supporting cast you're going to fail with that speaker it will never be a speaker that you're going to like it just won't okay um and some other speaker brands out there already come with a certain how sound if you will that allows you to make it sound good with very little effort other than of course good amplification yes that's understood but i'm saying you're not going to be working hard to make it sound really really good it will just sound good right right out of the gate out of the gate but this speaker needs a little more, think of it as the Mephisto. Remember the Mephisto? There was a lot of conversation about the Mephisto. When, when I first plugged in the Mephisto, it was a wild child. It was difficult to get it under control. We had a lot of difficulties. We, it was shrill, it was doing this, it was doing that. Do you guys remember that? And then all of a sudden we began to do the power cords, the interconnects. I bought the Griffin interconnects for it. Then I bought, you know, the Pandora was here. Then remember that, right? I started to do things to it. And all of a sudden the Mephisto began to warn you guys' heart. It began to really impress you. It began to really showcase what it's capable of doing. That's what that is. We got to work on it. We got to work on it. We got to work on the electronics. We got to work on the cabling. Um, you, this is again, living proof of what I have been saying all along. You can't just grab a speaker, drop it into position and you're done because it may not, it may not like what you have here. It may hate all of this. It may not play nice with this. 
So you have to be willing to begin to buy different power cords, begin to try different stands. That's if you have that personality, okay? I'm not saying all of you guys are going to do that. But when you are at this level, yes, of course, you have to. You owe that to that speaker. So the Antillion here is part of that conversation. The Antillion comes in now and adds analog, naturalness, humanity, human feeling to the presentation. And that speaker is going to allow me to hear that, what that amplifier is telling it to do. So continue to be here because we're going to play a hell of a lot more with that until you're evil. And I'm very excited to be able to bring this here, my third Griffin amplifier. And I have a feeling, guys, it will not be the last. Stay tuned for more. Have a good night.